In this video, we're going to talk about properties of vectors, and we're going to prove a couple. I'll show you how to prove that these are true. So let's take a look at some properties of vectors. Here's the first one. If we have a vector u plus v, we can switch the order that we add them. This is how we get the parallelogram design in drawing vectors in a plane. Second property says, if we have vectors u plus v plus w, we can take u plus v first and then add w, or we can take v plus w first and then add u. The order in which you add these does not matter. Third property says if we take a vector u plus the zero vector, we just get the vector u back. And the fourth one says if we take a vector u and we add negative u, we just get zero. So these are the addition properties. So one, two, three, and four are addition. 5, 6, 7, and 8 are all multiplication properties. So V, or number 5, says that if we take a scalar C and we multiply it by the vectors U plus V, this is the same thing as C times vector U plus C times vector V. We saw this last time in the last video with 3U plus V is equal to 3U plus 3P. Number 6 says if we take two scalars and we add them together and multiply by a vector. It's c times the vector plus d times the vector. Number seven says that we can multiply scalars first. And number eight says if we multiply any vector by one, you get the same vector back. So we're gonna prove some of these and this is more of a proof video. So we're gonna prove that two vectors are the same regardless of which order you add them. So. What we say is we say that u1, or sorry, that u, vector u, is a list of entries, u1, u2, all the way down to un, and we say that v is the same thing. And this will always be the same. So when we add these two together, we take u plus v, we take this list, u1 down to un, and we add v1 down to vn. So we know how to add these entries together. That means now we take u1 plus v1 and that goes all the way down to un plus vn. And we can switch the order of this thanks to the properties of real numbers. We know when we do real numbers we can switch the order. So we can say this is v1 plus u1 all the way down to vn plus un. And that means that we can break it back apart. So we know this is the same thing as v1 all the way down to vn plus u1 all the way down to un. So we know this is just the same thing as v plus u. So that is a proof that u plus v is v plus u. And you're saying, why do we have to do all this? Well, we have to do this because vectors are not real numbers. Vectors have a magnitude and a direction. So we've defined how we write our vectors, we've defined how we can add the two together, and using the commutative properties of real numbers, we have established a commutative property of vectors. So the real numbers establish vectors, or sorry, the properties of vectors. So we can't just assume that these properties of vectors are true. We now have a proof that this is true. So it might seem a little bit weird to do it, but if you can do these basic proofs, you're in a good spot because you understand how vectors work. Here's another one. If we have a scalar times u plus v, then we get a scalar times u plus a scalar times v. So again, we denote u plus v the same way. So here's what we do. We take c times u plus v. So here's what this is. This is a scalar times u1 all the way down to un plus v1 all the way down to vn. So now we can distribute our scalar in there. So we can say, okay, this is actually the same thing as C times U1 all the way down to UN plus V1 all the way down to VN. 
sorry, this should be plus, then I should have the C in there, so let's move this over, that does not want to move over at all, so this is plus C times V1 all the way down to Vn, and we know that this is just C times U plus C times V. So we have shown that this is true. You could go one step further and you could say this is equal to Cu1 all the way down to Cu2, or sorry, Cun plus Cv1 all the way down to Cvn, and that could be your final step, but that's not necessary. So there's a proof that that works. So those are two proofs right there. We'll do one final proof. We're going to show that a vector u plus negative u is equal to the zero vector. So what do I mean when I say zero with a line under it? That means that each entry in the vector u, or the vector zero, is just zero. So what does this look like on a graph? It looks like that. There is no vector. It's just zero. It stays at the origin. So let's prove this. So let's start with the vector u plus negative vector u. So this is equal to u1 all the way down to un. And then we say it's plus negative u1 all the way down to negative un. So let's add these together. So this is u1 minus u1 all the way down to un minus un. And this is just equal to zero, all the way down to zero, which is just the zero vector. So we've proven those properties. So those are three of the eight properties that we have proven. And I challenge you to prove the rest of these. Prove number two. Uh, number three is very, very easy. Number six is probably good to prove. Number seven is good to prove. Uh, number eight does not really need proving, so I challenge you to try to prove these three on your own. You can give them a shot in the comments below, and I'll tell you if they're right or not. Um, if you want to prove them more nicely in notation, it is perfectly okay to say that the vector u is equal to this ordered list and all the way up to un. And then you could say, for instance, that u plus v is just u1 plus v1, comma, all the way up to un plus vn comma, and that is perfectly okay when writing out proofs as well. So give those a shot, and hopefully you'll get them right. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll get to them as soon as possible. If this helped you, please share this video. It helps me, it'll help your friends, and it'll help me make better videos. So thank you for watching.